the first place that most people go, go to is the GIC. Welcome back to Tom and Sense and our mini series on investing. So last week we talked about where everyone should be starting. So this week what I want to talk about is a personal experience that I had. When I was younger, much younger than I am right now, I had my mom help me. This is how people start with investing I have found. They find out from a friend or a family member or a parent and the parent or that friend tells them, this is what I'm doing. This is what you should be doing. 17 or 18 years old and my mom had said, you know what? You start an RSP and put away 50 bucks a month. And then when you get older, you'll have a whole lot of money and then you can do something. And in the back of my mind, as she was saying these things, I, I swear my eyes were rolling. I couldn't even comprehend that I had to retire at some age. Like what 18 year old ever thinks about retiring? I didn't take my mom's advice. Kind of happy I didn't because I wouldn't want all my money in an RSP. What I should have taken away from that, something that everyone should take away, the habit of saving. Not enough people have that habit of saving. And so what that would have done for me included with compound interest, which Albert Einstein said it was the eighth wonder of the world for good reason. For those of you without doing a deep dive in the compound interest and what it really does and how it works and everything else, essentially, it's like a friend working for you when you're not able to work. So getting back to where most people start their investing journey in Canada. And the first place that most people go to is the GIC. Comment down below if you know what GIC stands for. Before we start explaining all of these, I am again not suggesting that a GIC is a great idea, bad idea. I'm indifferent. This is going to come from my perspective. So there, I guess I am telling you exactly what I feel about these, but I'm trying to explain these as well. Everyone is going to be different. There are different scenarios. There are different cases. Everyone having to invest in certain areas or starting that have started to invest in certain areas. So it's important, again, that you have a plan, you stick to that plan, and you can deviate from that plan if necessary. And you have a person in your corner that can help you out and make these decisions. So again, I'm here to make sure that you understand what a GIC, again, comment down below what a GIC stands for, what a GIC can actually do for you and how it works. The reason that some people start with a GIC is because it's safe. They walk into the branch of their local bank and what ends up happening is I want to invest. Great. Let's put you into a GIC. Will I lose money is the first question that most people ask when it comes to investing. And they say, no, nope, you can't lose your money here. Your money here is guaranteed. All you have to do is lock it in into a certain period of time, one year, two year, three year, five year, whatever years. At the end of that, period, you will have your money and then some extra, depending on the interest rate. Sounds like a great idea, right? Especially if you don't know what to do with your money and it's just going to sit there and do nothing, you might as well throw it into this, right? Well, what I would like to say to that is, if you have a plan, a GIC is not fluid. It is not liquid, meaning that your money cannot be accessed if you need it within that time frame. You can, however, you're going to get charged fees. So if you throw in, let's say, $10,000 and you need $5,000 out of that because an emergency has come up, well, first of all, there's two things here. You shouldn't be taking out of your investments for emergencies. But second, you need to be putting that money aside into a fund that's not going to tax you or charge you fees because that's what liquid money does. It doesn't charge you and it's readily available. So that's what we want. So a GIC is not good for that. Not to mention that the growth on the GIC, I think right now the rates are somewhere between two to three or maybe even 4% in some cases, or even higher. So comment down below what you think they are. I'm not up to date on checking exactly what GIC rates are at, because honestly, they're not keeping up with inflation. So for the majority of my clients, they're not in them. And that's just the truth. If you're not keeping up with inflation, you're losing. So it's essentially your money sitting in an investment that's protected, which it is, but you can't have access to it because they're going to charge you if you take it out before that contract is up and you're losing money. For most people, when you explain it to them like that, they're like, well, I guess that's not really the best idea. 
because I could just put it into a savings account at my local branch and I'd get some interest back. But you know what? They wouldn't charge me any fees if I took that money out. Why would I put it in a GIC? At the end of the day, a GIC is meant for security. The security is there. However, the rate of return is not because you're not keeping up with inflation. So it doesn't give you the possibility to outpace inflation. And everybody knows that inflation is sky high. It, unless you're getting anywhere from 6 to 8% or 10% on your investments, you're not really keeping up with inflation. And that really is important because over the long haul, that compounding interest should be working for you. But if your interest rate is at 3% for the next five years, you're literally not making almost any money on your money. Because if now we apply the rule of 72, comment down below if you know what the rule of 72 is. And if you don't, uh, if you want me to make a video on what the rule of 72 is, if we apply the rule to, of 72 to a 3% interest rate over five years, your money is not really making any money. It's not cookie cutter because some people would think, you know what, at least I have 3%. And that's fine. That's fair. There are those people out there. But I would also say that there's other investments that you could be putting your money into that could get you somewhere around 3% and also be liquid. So you wouldn't be tied into a contract for that specific length. So if you needed your money out, you could draw it out. And not only that, if you had your money elsewhere, you could actually do something with it. If your mind changed, you could then be like, okay, I want to switch funds. I want to allocate a portion of this portfolio here into a whole other fund. Again, you can't do that in the GIC because that's breaking the contracts. Talk to a professional, make sure you understand how a GIC really does work. But I'm telling you right now the basics and most people don't even know that because again, they just walk into their branch and say, listen, give me an investment. And so, yep, I'm in an, I'm in an RRSP. I've had client, many a client say, I'll ask him, what investments are you in? I'm in a GIC, okay? Now, what's that GIC under? Well, it's in a GIC. And so what most branches do is they put their GIC into an RSP. One of the worst combinations known to man. However, if you're there, it's not all lost. It's not a horrible thing. To sum it all up again, GIC is security. However, no rate of return. With that security comes no fluidity, so you can't access your money if you want to because you'd be breaking the contract and there's fees. Now it's about learning and finding out where you are. Again, finding your base so you can start at, from at any level here, right? You could be here or here or wherever you are. And now you've got the basic knowledge. You can figure out, okay, if I'm here and I want to be here, what will it take for me to get there? And if it's a portion of your portfolios in the GIC, that's fine. If you want to keep it there, awesome. If you want to have a look at options, look forward to the next videos because I'm going to start talking about how these, uh, for instance, the next video is about mutual funds and how they work, possibilities you have there because a lot of people don't know. And so that's why this is a five-part mini-series but I could go on for a very long time. And like I said, this is just a, a conversation about a GIC and the things that I have seen in my time. Now, imagine if you did a deep dive into GICs from different banks. But that, again, is a lot of information that doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you need to know how a product works. I hope you guys like this sort of information. I know for me, when I started to learn about all of these things, I wanted to just educate more and more people. And I feel like I don't see that anywhere as much as I should. And again, if you're in your 20s and 30s and you have no clue where to start, start with something free. Get some free education here. Again, thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. And if you guys have specific questions and that you don't want to make comments down below, shoot me a DM on my Instagram. That's where we can have those conversations. That's where we can dive in a little bit deeper because I understand five to 10 minute video is not going to explain everything that you need to know. But that's where, again, the comments come in and I can reply because I want to be able to help.